I think you'll end up, even if you try to go full suite, even if you're committed, you'll end up with a collection of applications. And it's really a question of degree. How hybrid will you be? How many applications? And you'll never end up with one system. So don't delude yourself, I'd say. You'll be hybrid. It's just a question of degree. Growing a business requires a holistic approach that extends beyond sales and marketing. This approach needs alignment among people, processes, and technologies. So if you're a business owner, operations, or finance leader looking to learn growth strategies from your peers and competitors, you're tuned into the right podcast. Welcome to the WBS Podcast, where scalable growth using business systems is our number one priority. Now, here is your host, Sam Gupta. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the WBS Podcast. I'm Sam Gupta, your host and principal consultant at Digital Transformation Consulting Firm, Elevate IQ. There are several systems and choices available to support the needs of your functions and business processes. Best of breed options offer much deeper functionality and system designed for a specific group of users. But communication and integration could require significant resources and maintenance from your organization. The full suite options can get you the basics to get you going, but might outgrow if a department has complex needs for its operations. As a business user, you need to decide how many apps you will be using in your enterprise architecture, balancing integration costs and flexibility. In today's episode, we invited an expert panel of cross-functional experts for a live interview on LinkedIn, who brings significant system integration and implementation, manufacturing and distribution, and finance expertise. But most importantly, a manufacturer who has owned several manufacturing companies and integrated several applications as they grew. With that, let's get to the conversation. Hey guys, welcome everyone to today's show. So today we have a very exciting panel here. We have a lot of different experts who bring several different expertise from different perspectives. Number one, we have Chuck. Chuck brings a lot of expertise from uh, from WMS perspective. Then we have Mike. Mike has run his own manufacturing company. He has bought a lot of different software in the past. So he is going to bring a lot of insight from the user perspective. Then we have Aaron. He brings a lot of expertise from finance organization. He does a lot of work in the finance space. And obviously, everybody is going to be introducing themselves as well. This is just the brief of the panel. And then we have Chris. Chris has been doing ERP implementations for what, like 18, 20 years now, Chris? Uh, so <laughs> he, he brings a lot of expertise overall. And then we have Tom Rodden. Uh, he's part of the Varian Medical Systems. He has done some large implementations, very well respected uh, in the CIO community. So yeah, so I'm super excited to discuss this just to touch a little bit bit on the topic. So we are going to be discussing from the context of different companies. What is going to be the context for the smaller companies? What is going to be appropriate for them depending upon their financial budget, depending upon their skill set in the organization? Then we are going to be covering for slightly bigger companies that is going to be medium sized because every company is different. Every company is going to have different financial budget and the IT skills as well. And their appetite for risk is going to be different too. We are going to be discussing best of breed for a specific department versus the operational backbone that we typically try to set as in case of, let's say, the in case of digital transformation or the ERP. So we are going to be covering all of that. Before we do that, let's start with the introductions. Chuck, do you want to introduce yourself first? Sure. Thanks, Sam. Uh, welcome to another great event, everybody. I love spending time with Sam and he knows that. Um, I have a 30 year manufacturing professional. I have done just about everything in manufacturing that there is to be done from drive a forklift and program a CNC machine to implement a small business ERP, CRM, inventory planning, shipping, and sales and marketing. And that's pretty much short, not short and long of it. Now I'm working in WMS uh, mobile technology, targeting warehouse and distribution. Okay, amazing. Thank you so much, Chuck, for that intro. Mike, do you want to introduce yourself quickly? 
Sure, sure thing. Thanks for having me here. And uh, Chris, good seeing you again. Um, you too, Mike. My, my background is about 40 plus years of probably the oldest guy on the panel here, 40 years in manufacturing. Sam mentioned that I had my own company. I worked for some multinationals in between. Now I work for an insurance company providing services to our 6,500 manufacturing customers. So I see it all from the one-man man pa shop to companies they have six-digit uh, bigger incomes monthly or weekly. So you with the whole 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 uh, string of it. Okay, amazing. Aaron, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. I uh, I don't have as, uh, I guess, fun of a background as everybody else here. Uh, you can CFO for all seasons, maybe. I'm uh, Aaron Spool. I'm a partner at Aventus. So I have a pretty deep operational CFO background. Chuck, I did not move a forklift, but I did do everything from, uh, I guess, the equivalent, but not as fun on the finance and accounting side, from journal entries to running business intelligence software systems to building all that stuff from scratch to obviously being a CFO for many different types of companies, and also in the manufacturing space. My firm is, we basically do an interim and fractional CFO work for a slew of different types of companies. And we're all over the manufacturing space, so I've seen a lot of different uh, companies go through a lot of the issues that probably have intersected with you. Okay, amazing. And financial forklifts are going to be probably equally fun. So now we'll move to class. Do yes, you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> Hi, Chris Ghiardini. I'm the president and owner of Turnkey Technologies. We're a 27-year-old uh, ERP and CRM implementation partner. We lead with uh, Microsoft Dynamic Solutions and really the the focus is business process automation, and um, it's a lot of fun. We're inside of a lot of different companies, diverse, some standard features, some very unique requirements. So this will be a great conversation today. Thanks for having me join. Okay, amazing. Thank you so much, Chris. Tom, do you want to quickly introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Tom Rodden. I am a four-year now CIO at Barry Medical Systems, and uh, and and uh, I think Chuck and I were talking a few days back about uh masquerading uh, as as uh, different things. Uh, do you ever feel totally <laughs> comfortable uh, at what you're doing or are you, you know, faking it? And um, I, I sometimes feel that way because I, I've spent about 10 years of my career in supply chain uh, as an operations guy where I was yelling at the IT guys and uh, telling them that they were under, under delivering. And then I spent uh, 10 years as a consultant with PricewaterhouseCoopers and Deloitte where the operational guys were yelling at me and then you know i was yelling at the it guys uh, in the companies that we were working with and then of course now i'm in it where everybody just yells at me and uh, so it's been it's been a very interesting circuit i've seen it all in a sense and uh, i'm very happy to be here been involved in a lot of erp implementations from all those different perspectives okay thank you so much tom so mike i am actually going to start with you if you don't mind and since you have been involved with the procurement yourself and I am pretty sure you have seen all of the integration challenges related to when you buy these individual pieces of software and what is going to be required to run an organization overall, considering all the financial risks that we typically see in procuring a software. So in your experience, uh, and obviously I don't know if you have seen these transformation initiatives for some of the larger companies as well, but what I'm really looking for is the journey of a company when they go, let's say, from... $10 million to 20 to 30 to uh, you know, 50 to 100 to a billion dollar, right? Every organization is going to have a different need. So what will be your perspective overall in terms of, you know, which company is going to be right fit for best of breed and which company is going to be right fit for full suite software? Well, in my experience, and again, started my own business and worked for multinational, I think it really depends on what you want out of the system. You know, and when I think of my own company, 30 years ago, started, I had a different need back then. So I looked more for a, a, a best in breed because I really wanted to know where my where my money goes from, where my money comes from, if I'm profitable or not. And as the organization grew, I needed totally different thing. You know, marketing became more important. You know, as you yep. grow, so it really, I think you need to sit down and say, where's my business? What do I want the system to tell me and what information do I even have to put in the system? So I think if you answer those questions, that will guide you to start somewhere. Again, I, I do say this over the years, your needs might change. Plus, better systems come out. Right now, you bought a system. This function of marketing was great, but 10 years ago, is that function in that system still good? Do I need to buy a best in breed to supplement that? And it's always going to be evolving journey overall, I think. 
every company is going to grow in terms of the processes the system needs are going to grow as well so depending upon the context of the company i think you are absolutely right that the need for the system and the unique situation in which best of breed versus full suite is going to be fit is going to change as well so tom i am actually going to move to you now and uh, from the integration perspective just because you have worked in slightly more controlled and regulated environment and we know that in some cases the integration is going to be super critical that the systems need to be integrated otherwise we are not going to have the same financial control as opposed to let's say if we talk about engineering or marketing sure those are important as well but they might not be as important overall from the financial pr- control perspective from the operational perspective so in your opinion which are the functions that require the integration definitely in the organization in respect of whether you choose the best of breed or whether you choose full suite you definitely have to have the integration so now your strategy is going to be when you are deciding the system whether you want to spend for the integration or do you want to get the pre integrated system so in your experience when you look at this journey of the company what will be your thoughts in terms of how company should be approaching this well it's i think to echo mike's uh, comments a bit it's a fairly personal choice if you want to think about it that way you know to yeah. the to the company uh, and the and the and the organization i certainly love and i think most people love the idea of a a a full suite a single throat to choke a fully integrated system no need to build your own interfaces and maintain them no need to worry about apis to other solutions not needing to deal with multiple vendors who are pointing the fingers at each other you know you simplify your landscape you simplify your vendor management and the relationship management side you you know you, you simplify your support organizations load right do they have to support a variety of different applications or do they have to really master one application perhaps in one code base we've had in my experience uh both as a consultant and and as uh, a leader in IT for Varian over the last 13 years we've certainly had a preference where possible to go for full suite the problem is that the full suite often falls short in critical areas and then you are faced with either fixing it yourself customizing getting it up to a certain level that is acceptable or going with multiple applications and starting to build a best of breed solution what i remember many years ago in my my early days in ge when i was in in operations before consulting before it and we had we had the consultants coming in and talking about a string of pearls you need to build a string of pearls well that's pretty hard to do when uh, and i'll give you just one example this is uh, related to i'll i'll say the vendor's name uh, they're very well respected salesforce.com at varian we had this program called unity we were going to take all of our customer facing applications and unify them replace them with one single application salesforce.com it was this vision of a 360 view of the customer service marketing sales everything in one um and field service installation training and education for the customers you know everything and um as we started that path we found that well for our products we needed a highly configurable solution because we have very complex products and uh salesforce wasn't at that point ready with a true configurable solution a cpq solution so we went with another product and built the integration and then we found out they weren't really quite where we needed to be with field service and installation and the work order process and we ended up having to then build uh, integration to yet another application and so we ended up building our string of pearls uh in that way very reluctantly and that was 5 6 7 years ago now and we have and this is the other thing to 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 echo some of what mike said and build on it it's not only what you want and need but it's also what the vendors are capable of and the vendors in the marketplace evolve and so we found that salesforce became capable of doing cpq and complex configurations and we are in the process now of replacing our original pearl that has been equaled if not surpassed by salesforce 
And we've already done that on the field service side and the installation side where their work order processing has gotten. So we've actually started to get back to the original vision of the full suite on all customer facing applications, but it's been a long journey and a bumpy road. So but there's, there's an example of you know, what you want may not exist. Yeah, you are absolutely right. And you hit on some very important point, but we need to keep one thing in mind that obviously Varian is a very large company overall and their needs are going to be slightly more robust. So one thing that we come across overall from the system needs perspective, sometimes even these smaller or medium sized companies, they might actually think that they have a very complex requirement and they might want to actually go for, um, let's say best of breed, but they might not have the internal IT capabilities the way you guys have, the kind of budget you guys have uh, in terms of, uh, you know, able to integrate these systems. So sometimes simplifying the business could also be the choice. So I don't know, Chris, I'm actually gonna move to you now. So from your perspective, what do you recommend? Do you recommend more of the best of breed depending upon the capabilities of the, the organization? Let's say if they don't have any, any IT capabilities, they don't necessarily have any departmental capabilities to be able to do any sort of customization. Would you recommend best of breed or would you recommend full suite? You know, it's it's a combination. I said sometimes it's hybrid, mm-hmm. but it really depends on where the organization is at maturity wise, because a lot yeah. of times they're not they're not automating those processes today. So um, um, a simpler process would be a place to begin their discipline. It's almost like a CRM system adoption. So they have to crawl, walk, run. So, but the answer is, yeah, you you you, you want to do core full suite, but you want to do best of breed on top of it. So when I say hybrid, for example, you know, we've got people in the animal livestock area. Great. Core ERP will handle a lot of things. So you think about, can I manufacture cows in a standard ERP system? You're like, you know, it sounds funny, but <laughs> in actuality, you can model up animal grow out production costing, but you need a little deeper application to keep all the attributes about that specific cow. And so then you leverage a product like a true type or a pig's nose where you're not, the cow is a serialized item, right? You're making a serialized <laughs> item, but you're, you're laughing, but now you're linking it down. And it's no different in the same example uh, where we're manufacturing animal feed. Great. It's process manufacturing into a discrete product, right? We go from blending into a bag. Well, what's it not do? It doesn't get down to that industry granularity of maybe allergens. So what you do is, again, you bring on yet something that goes really deep, but doesn't have the whole suite, but fills in that gap requirement. And again, you're always rationalizing, can I buy that gap or do I have to build it? Right, Tom? You know, so again, in, in integration services, they're, they're a point of life. As long as you thoughtfully integrate so that you don't lose accounting control, you know, again, in, in the same, this is an agricultural example because they had 30 entities and hey, guess what? They needed to have a repair facility right? Where they're bringing in equipment and they're fixing it just like a just like a repair station. Well, again, standard ERP, you're thinking, can we use that field service app to run a, field, a, a service station? Yeah, it's not perfect, right? Cash drawer, work orders, parts, labor. So again, same thing. If you leverage a best of breed, it'll manage like a repair station and it's not field service because people are driving in cars, but same thing. And then that integration loop is imperative so that, you know, if they're buying stuff over there, accounting sees those liabilities. And so again, that integration loop creates this the accounting controls and you don't lose confidence because you keep full visibility of that. So again, I'm using that hybrid approach. And a lot of times that core suite, it's going to nail it because maybe their maturity, more advanced customers, if you're replacing existing technology and they already do that, well, then you need to find an equivalent, better solution for them to migrate off of, or you'll have a, a mutiny inside the organization as users lose functionality. And all of a sudden they can't manage the business the same way they did on the old product. So long answer, but like I said, I, I like that hybrid approach uh, when there's industry capability out there. And sometimes you just have to build those little gaps. So Yeah, I completely agree. And you know, when you are going to have gaps, I mean, you don't really have a choice and you have to definitely build those. So now, Aaron, I'm actually going to move to you, and I want you to touch more from the finance perspective, because when you look at the finance organization, when you are simply starting from from the company perspective, you know, um, you are not going to have as robust need. But as your needs are going to grow overall from the finance perspective, you might grow out even in the functionality that your core ERP system is going to provide. And then you may need additional uh, modules to be able to support your, your core ERP function. So would you rather live in the core ERP system or would you utilize some of the best of breed systems such as let's say the corporate performance management, which does a much better job overall from the cash flow management perspective, um, you know, it integrates, uh, it, then it would require a little bit of integration. I don't know whether you need the integration in case of when you are doing the analytics or not, but what is your perspective overall when you look at the journey of a company 
from the finance perspective, when it is going to evolve, would you recommend best of breed or would you recommend full suite? So I think that's, if we look at the question itself, it, it first is obviously it's going to depend on the company. I am, I will say, I will flat out say I'm highly skeptical of full, uh, full suite. Because if you look at any of this, I, I'm not going to pick on Salesforce, but I'm going to pick on a different giant multi-billion dollar company. Let's call it Oracle. And maybe, I don't know if anyone's heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> look at their full suite, right? And this is not a picking on Oracle. If you look at anyone who's got full suite, so you look at Salesforce as well. Do you think that they totally developed these products and fully integrated it themselves? Or did they buy another company and slapped it on and then maybe integrated it? And, and, and this is not a criticism of big giant software firms that you're buying stuff from. If you think that, or just, just for, and then I'll get to the answer. If you think that full suite is literally just plug and play and everything magically integrates and it's Valhalla, you are sorely mistaken. The type, you cannot get away from master data management. And if you think that, oh, just because it has the same corporate title and you might have the same corporate rep and I have the one throat to choke of the guy who sold it to me or the gal who sold it to me, that's nice. But as the salespeople like to say, oh, that was just a demo. You have to, like, none of this stuff is going to perfectly integrate. None of it. And if you think that it is, then that's, then oh, sign me up. That's magic. And even if it does perfectly integrate, your needs will change. So let's, let's, let's pause on that and let's talk because you just want me to talk about finance right now. So we have a saying in finance is that you have the general ledger, which is your, your standard financial reporting to income statement, balance sheet, the statement, the cash flow, right? That's the stuff, as I like to say, colloquial. That's the stuff, if you get wrong, you go to jail. So everything else, if I get my product pricing wrong, we just lose money. I might get fired, but I ain't going to jail. I get the general ledger wrong. The SEC's coming after me. The FBI's coming after me. That's bad. So I, I, and finally, I don't know about you guys on the manufacturing side, but we find as people really don't enjoy going to prison. That's not, that's not on the list. So... <laughs> So the first criteria I would say is, will I go to prison? So once I say that I'm not going to go to prison, great. Do not go to jail. I'm passing go. I'm collecting my $200. Look at all these analogies I'm putting together. But really, so but in all seriousness, if you look at finance and let's put finance in a manufacturing perspective, right? Because that's kind of what we're talking about here. What does finance care about? And the very, very beginning is, do I have an, a reputable general ledger? The first thing that I'm going to care about from a manufacturing perspective of the general ledger is my inventory and my inventory management. So I don't care what the general ledger says, and I don't care what the ERP says. I'm going to go to your factory floor. Do you have boxes everywhere and it doesn't make any sense? And, oh, I just order stuff, whatever. That's a process thing. No, I don't care what fancy ERP system you have. That's, that's, there's reality versus software and use of it. So that's part one. So inventory management's number one. The second thing you're going to start caring about is everything related related to either job costing or appropriate pricing. So how much does it cost to do the thing you're doing and how do I appropriately price? Those are the major things you care about in finance in a manufacturing setting. After that, everything else is gravy. And as you get more complex, you've got to be able to make those, you've got to be able to, and hopefully in finance, monitor that. How you manage those complexities is going to is going to depend upon your operation. Is going to depend upon you know the finance um, the software. So I don't really I would not look at it as a full service offering versus a uh, versus a best in breed offering. I would say first and foremost when it comes to software, and I'm going to say this, and maybe other CFOs will get angry at me. Operations comes first. So finance comes last. All right. I and I'm okay with that. If I because if the operations gets messed up, the customer gets angry. You, you, God forbid, you made a faulty product. You, you, you're out of business. I'm, 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 I'm after the fact counting. Ideally, we'll be strategic and figure out profitability and all that good stuff. And are we selling too much? Or who are we hiring? And all that other fun stuff. But in the end, operations <clears throat> has to come first. As long as you have enough, if you have, if you have standard good unique keys and you can tie back the data, you can do your data mapping back and forth. You can figure out everything else in finance. So that's a long way of saying that. I don't necessarily say it matters. Okay, thank you so much for that insight. And, and you are so right that operation is always going to be first. But when we look at the integration, let's say if we are having two different, completely two different systems from the finance and operations perspective, your experience will never be as is unless you are spending a lot of money in really integrating them. And that integration it, it, could be extremely, be extremely tricky. They'll never be integrated. <laughs> Because you're never going to have the appropriate real time of like, okay, what, what are you talking about? On the factory floor, like I've suddenly produced something 
And now I'm able to analyze that instantaneously and say, oh, wow, I'm losing money. That, that doesn't happen. I've never seen a single company could pull it off. And also, you don't need to know. No, we're not, we're not day trading here. You don't need that type of, in finance, you don't need that real-time information. You need to be able to make appropriate pricing decisions, make appropriate, and make appropriate you know, vendor costing decisions. But you should, that's more of an after the fact normally. Very, you need the real-time stuff when you're actually making a product. The integration side, you also have to ask yourself, like, what are you integrating? All I want in finance is be able to tie information in order to, and if I can, if I can look at your ERP and you say you've got this number of people, you've got this factory floor, you got these people, can I job cost appropriately? Can I see what the profitability and the efficiency of my factory is? Can I do it by product? Can I do it by customer? Can I do it by any other fun little different type of region? Or that's what I want to be able to do. And if I can do that with the data that your ERP provides, and I can tie that out not only to my financials and my gap accounting, but also to my cash, I'm happy. Now, if you want to call it best in breed, you want to call it even, I don't care. I want that, what I just described. And if I have to, pay, have to hire six more IT people in order to get it, I may have to. If those decisions are that important to drive the profitability of the company. But if they're not, I'm not really going to make those decisions to that level of key where the executives aren't going to use that data to create those types of data-driven decisions because they got better fish to the fry, then who are we kidding here? We don't need it because we're not going to use it. Okay, great perspective there. And Chuck, I'm going to come back to you. But before that, I want to make sure that I'm addressing Chris's comment because he actually raised the hand. So Chris. And I think that where you started the question about best of breed in terms of corporate performance management, what you're going to find is most of the, most of the, most ERP systems may not support, and again, back to the business maturity, the complexity around the budgeting and the forecasting process. That's where we see, sure, CPMs, they, they're great analytics dashboards and they create different user experiences out there. But I think where some of the the business systems drop down. It's just that it's in forecasting. Anything you drop on a budget. But if you look at the complex models, that's where I see us going upstream to a CPM type system, even on top of the Microsoft Dynamics platform. Again, complex businesses, they have complex forecasting models. And standard ERP systems, they don't support the calculation basis, right? Between sub ledger, if you're trying to forecast products or services or manufacturing, production, supply chain, and, and turn those forecasts into budgets and, and, and have some real action going on between them. But that's where I typically see you go to a best of breed, Sam. I just want to kind of fill that in that absolutely you're going to find gaps. And, and for again, for the more mature organizations that got a lot of members that need real-time information to make exactly. decisions, sorry, you do go upstream to one of those tools. So mm -hmm. Yeah, you are so right. And smaller companies can live off of you know spreadsheet as well if they have to do that. And then you know once they grow, then they can probably utilize some more sophisticated CPM systems, it's right? Maturity. Uh, That's maturity. It's business maturity. That's it. So yeah. So uh, Tom, I'm actually going to come back to you, but you know Chuck has not spoken, so we want to make sure that he's able to speak. So Chuck, please uh, share your thoughts so far in terms of what your perspective is. But I really want you to touch more from the warehouse perspective I will. because warehouse is so critical overall mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the needs. And I have seen even the smaller organization that could probably be living on QuickBooks and they might be completely fine with that. But mm -hmm. they need very sophisticated WMS system mm -hmm. to be able to measure the cost. And if they don't have that, then they could be in real trouble. So please share your thoughts, right? Well, they may need big, expensive systems. I mean, I'm not going to repeat what's been said by the other folks on the panel. It clearly depends on the business life cycle. Yep. Okay. And, you know, what, what is the system? What is the ERP? It's a big, expensive calculator. And it's beyond being a big, expensive calculator. It's about data reuse. Okay. And data sharing. And ultimately, being able to pull information from different responsibilities, okay, in order to be able to do the individual's position better. And as the companies proceed through the life cycle, it's a pretty predictable life cycle. They start with disparate tools. They start with spreadsheets and QuickBooks or whatever it is, okay? And then they realize that they've outgrown that. Yep. And typically, they will go into more of a best of breed situation because they want to probably have some sort of unified view. OK, that data sharing and reuse. And as they go into that best of breed at, at their level, OK, the integration costs disappear or are very, very low in that there's nothing between tools. OK, no, no integrating between tools, if you will. And and then as the companies prepare or continue to grow, the once again, they go back to this individual best, I'm sorry, I said integrated, I said best of breed, I mean integrated suite. They go to these best of breed tools, but then they have to be able to incur the costs. From the warehousing perspective, okay, your inventory is easy when you're a young company. You can manage it. I worked for a guy who used to manage it in his head. 
but then that became too much. And he did it with paper. And then we implemented an ERP system because it became too much to manage. But what is my future going to look like? Okay. What is my ability of that ERP system to be able to integrate with those other systems? So in the context of a warehouse, okay, if all I'm doing is moving a little bit of material, doing some, in, some receiving and shipping, it's not that big a deal. But if my volume increases massively like it is now, yeah. how am I going to integrate with automated storage and retrieval? How am I going to integrate with pick to light? Yeah. How am I going to integrate with robotics? I need a very sophisticated system yeah. that is the ability to, to integrate. Guess what? That's probably going to be a best of breed, okay? Because they have the resources to be able to provide that ability to integrate. And so the other thing becomes the user experience. In the smaller companies and and the and the early stage ERP systems, we were running it off of desktops, okay? And we got more desktops and they're cheap. In my world, mobility is crucial, okay? So you need more of a best of breed type of system to be able to work in that world. The, the, the user interfaces simply aren't sophisticated enough to support the productivity of each sophisticated function when you get into that mobile aspect by way of example. So again, it echoes what the other fellas said, but it really is a life cycle thing. Personally, if I could wave a magic wand, I would want to have an all-in-one, you know, do everything. But I really, I, I've lived the life cycle and I'm working with customers who are living different aspects of the work of this life cycle. So You are so right, Chuck. It's uh, definitely about the life cycle. And Mike and Aaron, I'm actually going to come back to you. Uh, but Tom, you had a comment. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I think everyone's making a lot of sense. And, and so much of this depends on where you're coming from. Uh, not, I don't mean personally, but more from a scenario point of view. Where are you in the life cycle, the evolution, the maturity? You know, what is it that you're trying to do in terms of maybe system enablement and what does the marketplace allow? Uh, is there a full suite that actually delivers or does it fall woefully short? So the two points I would like to make, again, supporting the, the kind of default position of full suite that may not exist and you may have to ultimately decide I need I need to plug some gaps and I need to do some best of breed. But I, I continue to feel that if you look at business process and you look at data, I think one of the guys here brought up data as a big issue. One of the big issues I've had over the years as an IT leader has been and even as an operations guy has been the boundaries between these systems. I'll take Manufacturing is one example of engineering, where the engineers create the E-bomb and creating the M-bomb or the manufacturing bomb is in a large, to a large degree duplication, but it is really making it an operational executable bomb in the manufacturing process. And so it is a bit different. And if you end up having systems that are completely separate, your your PLM system is completely separate from, and, and your engineering system is completely separate from your, your manufacturing systems as you go into the string of pearls, so to speak. Now you have to manage the duplication of the data and the consistency and the integration of the data and the, the, the release of changes, the, the engineering change management process, and how does that flow? And ideally, you, you would like to avoid a lot of complexity around that data management and that data integration. And, you know, in my experience, again, we looked at a lot of things. Again, I'm not, I'm not promoting any product at all, believe me. Um, but when we, Varian has been an SAP shop for a lot of years. And when we looked at this, we said, you know, we can, we can do a push of a button conversion from E-bomb to M-bomb if we keep it within the suite. And so we made that decision. We made a similar decision uh, when we looked at production orders, you know, we could run MRP and MPS and we could create our production orders and, you know, we could take into account all of the demand planning and supply and we could create a schedule and then we needed to get it down to the shop floor. And what was the MES system, the manufacturing execution system that we would use? And we looked at a bunch of things and a lot of the manufacturing guys said, let's go best of breed, let's go with something else. And again, we looked at the complexity of passing data back and forth the production orders themselves, the back flushing, the inventory management. And we just said, wow, we're going to have to build a lot of integration yeah. to make this boundary invisible to the users and an accurate 
updating process that will keep the finance guys and the rest of us out of jail. You know, we, we ended up saying, you know what, there may be some trade-offs in terms of user interface. We'll have to work on that. But the integration is so critical that we again made a decision as a company to go with the suite. So that's, that's kind of one point. And then the other point is just support. The more applications that we have in our landscape, again, my personal experience, the more challenging it is to have a team that can support it. And you start to get into more and more single points of failure, more difficulty covering time zones if you grow beyond a, a small enterprise to a larger, maybe global enterprise. Uh, and you need more bodies to cover the landscape and the time zones. In that sense, simplicity, cost, integration, and data management that for me say, full suite's the way to go if you can. Yeah. But you just have to be honest with yourself. You may, as Chuck and others have said, you, you may just have requirements that say it's not good enough. And then you have to you have to figure out how to fill that gap and address that problem. Yeah, you are so right, Tom. I mean, you touch on two different points. One is integration, and that could that could itself be building just like an ERP product. It could be as complex as that. And then the support is a very important point that when you are doing it yourself, probably your vendors are not going to actually support that code. So that's definitely going to be a consideration uh, that you have to consider. And now, Mike, I'm actually going to come back to you. You had a comment. Sorry. Go ahead, please. Yeah, I want to just comment back to something that Chuck said, and I agree on this. It's look at this from a manufacturing and warehousing point. You hit it right on. We put a great ERP system in. There was full suite. We had no issues. Suddenly, three years ago, the company started going as a manufacturer into the e-shipping. That ERP system, that suite that we had, we are able to hold this forecasting system. We make 10,000 widgets. We ship every Wednesday to XYZ customer. And suddenly we did e-marketing, directly shipping and producing. So we, we, we were for years happy with this system. We loved it. You're an integrated system. Our, our business model changed. What do you do? We went out there. We tried to manipulate it and, and, and fudge it. And we ended up going out and buying another system that we then had to integrate back to our schedulers that used the ERP, the MES system. Everything was great because we worked to a plan. You turn on in the morning, somebody starts buying things that you didn't even know they exist. The system wasn't flexible enough. And then talk talk back to the system to adjust manufacturing, actually the widget making. So we had to actually go out, find a, an e-commerce system that we could integrate. And again, we didn't have the integration technology that we didn't have the IT department. So we partnered with somebody that actually was able to do that. And today, this works. I, I still would call that this company has a, a suite, but they bought a little kicker that literally just takes care of that 15% of their business. Now, the customer of ours, so I talked to them actually a couple of weeks ago, and they said that 15% due to what happened last year became a 35 to 40% of their business. Now, even the add-on best in breed is struggling because it was never designed to handle that much of a business. So they are actually right now and they're buying. And my advice to them is go with a bigger system, get rid of the one or replace your suite with a suite that is capable of doing the e-business. So that, that's what they are up right now. Do I change my, my, my uh, add on my best of breed? Do I buy another best of breed on top of the, best of read to so much or do I change my suite? So they're actually gonna be sitting there and I and I personally think because there are different systems and I think they're looking at a suite. Okay, amazing insights there. Uh, thank you so much, Michael, for that. And uh, Aaron, I think you are next. So I'll go back to there's a couple of things here. It says I think there's a fatal assumption made that if you believe that full suite automatically gives you integration. So I don't believe that's the case. I think that that still requires master data management. And I think that, and, but taking that aside, the only constant we're going to have in this is change, right? The only constant we have in business is change. So I cannot, if, if I could, if I could predict things really, really well, I'd be doing this uh, from a private island as opposed to my basement office here. All right. Let's be clear here. All right. So my, my ability to predict and forecast the future is eh, at best, no matter what ERP best and breed system I'm using. Okay. So as far, um, but if you think about everything that we've discussed, it really comes back down to a simple thing of you know business requirements. And 
I think that looking at something from a best in breed or a full suite, if you think about it, if we peel back, you know, and Tommy, you mentioned this, you had to get a very specific business requirement. And I'm just going to paraphrase here. I apologize if I get it wrong. Of master data management was so critical because you had so many different systems that the suite of pearls would, 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 it was too risky. And so the functionality of master data management was so much more important than maybe something else outside. So it was worth it to do full suite versus what, you know, you know, Chuck and Michael, what you said was that there are certain functionalities that existed that were so varied that it made sense to have those functionalities because they were mission critical. And that's part of what I was attempting to say from, from the finance perspective, there will be points in time where I'm going to have a function that's mission critical. And if I don't have a system that can do it and I deem it mission critical, I'm going to have to find that system. So I would, I would dare say, Sam, it says like, I wouldn't look at it through the lens of it's either best in a breed or it's a full suite system and certain points of time in the company or, or a life cycle change. I would dare say it's go back to something very, very basic, critical business requirements. Yeah, you are spot on with respect to your assessment on the critical business requirements. So, uh, Chuck, you had some comments there, I guess, right? Yeah, I, just one of the things that I, that I've seen is that we talk about, you know, Mike talked about the e-commerce plugin, and yeah. Tom talked about the manufacturing requirement. It, it, it's also possible for a business to over consider or over buy yeah. as they go forward. Being a manufacturing guy, I love the idea of presentation of manufacturing documents and that sort of thing in, you know, right to the user at the time, exactly the right time when we can predict that. But I think there's some saying about road to somewhere was paved with good intentions, you know, and it was very, not a very pleasant thing. Yeah, I want to do that. And I pick a system based on it and I never have the resources to be able to get there. So, you know, likewise with the e-commerce, I would love to be able to do e-commerce, but many of the companies don't actually understand how to turn their business into a successful e-commerce enterprise. So likewise, I would love to be able to do robotics, okay, and full automation, okay, but they may not know how to get there or they may never get there. So there's definitely a basis for incremental improvement, which of which I've always been a fan. Okay, amazing. Thank you so much, Chuck, for that. Chris, you haven't uh, spoken for a while, so I want to make sure that you're able to speak. (laughs) Oh, I can speak. Go ahead, please, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, you know, and and again, so we do sell whole suite, but as I said, and they are fully integrated. So I guess the the experiences you've had, Aaron, it's unfortunate. It sounds like that you've, but again, if you get siloed applications, integration services rule. Um, We had an SAP client buy one of our Dynamics client, and they spent a million and a half to integrate. SAP into the finance and operations manufacturing. These guys manufacture medical devices and the implementation on Dynamics 365 FNO was so strong, SAP didn't replace it. Again, but that's a heck of a commitment, isn't it? To put service loops in there, to synchronize procurement, to production, to demand, to forecast. So a million plus. So that that punctuates the value of integration services. And I think that's that's just an assumption that to focus on that test of breed where you have real deep industry requirements and, and the assumption that you can do successful integration and you can, as long as it's thoughtfully done, you can accommodate all the control issues. Yeah, you've got business process discussions about where does the customer master, who owns it, right? Right, Aaron? Where, <laughs> where do we own the customer master? You know, do we make it in CRM? Well, who assigns the customer number? Accounting likes that control. Yeah. What about credit and control? So again, I think that as you articulate those business processes, you can come to those decisions where Right. There's not contention there. Maybe it can come from here and here, but it's all about defining the rules of how you do the integration. But again, I'm still an advocate of getting getting that deep functionality. And again, you're starting with a whole suite, fully integrated, but you're still going to take these deep vertical pieces. And there's a lot of people out there that have built those add ons. I mean, Chuck, for example, most ERP systems didn't have warehouse management. Most don't still. Right. And and to your point, you know, QuickBooks customers don't have inventory and purchasing. So when they get a warehouse management, it's got a sub ledger. So it is a sub ledger. So you got core ledger, sub ledger, and we integrate them again. And so, again, you think sub ledgers, sometimes the project management sub ledger doesn't have robust enough resource management tools to allocate and do that. So there's a layer on top of a project management. It's still a sub ledger. Right. So, again, GL is the hub. But again, whether we're extending in business intelligence, we're extending into corporate performance management. Maybe we've got AP automation that's out here. Right. Because, again, most ERP systems aren't going to have all that rich workflow OCR. They may have some of it. But again, you're, you're, you're doing trade offs. And again, it's back to that. Am I primitive? Am I complex? 
very sophisticated, right? And we can spend more depending on where we're at in that maturity cycle. So, Okay, great insights there. Uh, thank you so much, Chris, for that. And uh, before we wrap up, I mean, one thing that we want to make sure is I know that as a group, we are slightly divided. Some people are binary with respect to their preference for best of breed versus full suite. And some people are sort of in the middle, right? So one thing that we are going to do is we are going to do five pros and cons of each of these approaches, assuming that both, you know, everything has a place in this world. Okay, <laughs> so five pros and cons. So Tom, I'm actually counting on you first. Can you tell me what are going to be five pros and cons of both of these approaches? And you can do one or two, and then I'm going to move to others. Yeah, that, that, that'd be a good idea because I didn't prepare my five pros and cons. I didn't really, <laughs> like we had some homework before we came. One each. Um, so you guys, I, 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 I had to go to the and start writing down your pros and cons so you get ready. <laughs> and I'll just embarrass myself. So, I mean, to me, one of the pros is simplified data management, as I was mentioning before. Which and one I can give other examples. You have to you have to pick first which one, best of read uh, or full no, suite. Sorry, I'm talking I'm talking full suite. Yeah. Okay. I'm talking full suite. Now I'd say I'd say generally speaking, um, you you have again it's not magic as Aaron was saying. You, you don't necessarily have the integration. You you but you often have a a, a good chunk of integration that comes with the, the full suite. Um, again, if people are slapping together things and calling it a full suite, that's a different story. But you do get some, if not a lot, of simplified, unified data management. I think that's that's pretty important. Um, I'd say second thing is the simplified landscape becomes much easier to support. And you, your people can work maybe on, your IT people, for example, can work on some other things like UI and try and improve that as opposed to the UI being great, but like the data behind it and the integration issues. So I think um, support is is easier. Relationship vendor management is oftentimes easier. And uh, and again, the, the data integration. So I'd throw out those three pros. I think the cons, if I throw out a couple of cons on full suite, um, to be you know perfectly honest, sometimes full suite's pretty expensive. You may avoid complexity, but you pay for that simplicity. The full suite vendors oftentimes charge more and you have to decide if that, that value is worth it. Uh, so that's one big con uh, in, in many cases. And maybe I'll leave it at that for now. Okay, amazing. So we have uh, three pros and, and, and one con and one con is going to be expensive and the pros are going to be number one support you mentioned. I, I was saying data management, uh, data management, support and vendor management and yeah. vendor management. Okay, data management, vendor management, support. Uh, Chuck, I'm actually going to move to you next. Do you agree with these three factors and the cons? Do you disagree? If you disagree, what are you going to include in this? I agree with them, but I'm going to present a, con, a pro for each one. Okay. For, for full suite, I mean, I have one slight disagreement the entire thing. What actually is probably the first and leading thing in, in the organization is actually a sale because nothing happens without one. And in the case of the full suite, what a full suite obviously or ultimately will offer nowadays is a unified view that gives you the ability if you have a customer facing role, whether it be project sales or even a vendor facing role with that unified view, you're able to really have a better picture of what the history is, what are the struggles, what are the challenges that are facing you in context for what you're doing right at that moment. And I think that's really what the full suite does in exceptionally well, oftentimes. And then the best of breed what it allows you to do, which I just love, is that since every organization is so different, you're going to need to put a disproportionate amount of resources into a function, whether it be manufacturing, okay, whether it be project management, whether it be warehouse management, whether it be transportation and logistics or even forecasting. And by using a best of breed, you can allocate a disproportionate amount of your funds to really solving whatever issues are with that particular function, really streamlining that before you move on. Yeah, amazing. So let me try to summarize this, and I don't know if I got this right. So so first one was, I guess, the embedded analytics that you get as part of the integrated suite. And the second one was the disproportionate or the strategic priority in a specific department. Uh, yeah, I would say the first one is really the is really the you know the the shared view, the shared data shared yeah. for whatever those interactions are outside, both outside and within the organization. And then certainly you got it right for the for the second. Okay, amazing, love it, Mike. 
do you want to add anything? Do you agree, disagree with anything so far? Well, I think some the greatest key points were already made from what I see, but I want to just emphasize what was Chuck said on, a, on, on the pro for the for the best of breed. If you really need something specific or you put an emphasis in your business, you know, we heard Aaron talking about finance, you know, it's not critical, but you can go to jail. If that's your priority, go with the best of breed. Add that, add that part in that this, this is the life, the true lifeline of my business. And I don't trust this mixed together, but then I'm going to turn it around and go with the, the pro for in my book for the, for the full suite is if you, if you have an average business that doesn't have those outliers and super requirements, when you're getting into this and you don't have your internal support, I think a suite gets you going. And as you grow and you find out this isn't exactly what I need, or then go back to what I said first, get that best of breed to give you that business edge. And I think Chuck mentioned a couple before, you know, said, hey, this is all good, but I need that silo. This is becoming... Or the example I use is the e-commerce. Five years ago, we didn't know it's an issue. System was great. Keep your mind open. But I think if you if you tip your foot in the water and you get something, I think start with a, with a suite. And as you learn pros and cons. But last week we had a great show, and I think one of the things that came out of that show: know what you want and shop around. Don't take the first system. You know, oh, everybody talks about X, Y, Z. I'm buying it. Yeah. No. Bring people in, look at their systems, look at their support, talk to their customers. How was it? And then you start out with a full suite and then do your best of breed as you see need. Okay, so I'm not entirely sure about the pros here. So the pros are going to be for the full suite. If you don't necessarily have the outlier, then go for full suite. So what is going to be a pro here? Can you help me understand? Well, it's, it's simple. It covers you. It's, it's your basic. It covers your basics. And, and gives you everything to run your business. You have your data. You start in on, on got everything, and you know, and your I, I use Microsoft Office. It gets you an email, gets you a spreadsheet, it gets you a, a word process, it gets you PowerPoint. You're good to go. If you want to go into the details, you need your best. Okay, amazing, love it. Okay, Aaron. So I know that you are not going to be for the the full suite. <laughs> I don't know if you are going to have any pros there. So, so I don't know, I, there, there are a few. So listen, Full okay. Suite has its place, right? Okay. So I, the riff off what Michael says is that theoretically it has some of everything. So yeah. if you have a particular need and a couple of light needs or you don't have certain needs, but you might in the future, a Full Suite could be helpful because at least it has something. It might not be the perfect thing. It might You might be getting, but you can't, the difficulty in the end with Full Suites is very, very difficult to be all things to all people. So odds are you're good at something and you're about a B to a C and everything else. Now, if you are okay with a B to a C because you don't really need an A, then full suite could be perfect for you. So, so part one is riff off what Michael says. I'll say it slightly differently, um, but I give credit to Michael because he said it, uh, is uh, I, attribution there, is it, theor- it theoretically can do a lot and things that you might, you might need even either now or later. The other thing, and what we didn't really talk about, this gets a little bit more into the weeds, is that uh, you can either call it user profile management in a full suite, or you know, what I like to talk about is data security. So one of the bears of having multiple different systems, especially in a finance perspective, is I might have a BI system, and I might have a GL, and then I might have a procurement system, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I have to have a separate user profile for every single one of those. Now, I might, and I could easily have a control issue. Because suddenly I gave someone access to on this system, their particular piece of data, they didn't have that. That is a bear and a half. And if you're trying to do ETL back and forth, there's no security that ports over. Each system has to have its own security. So you should all be impressed I actually know any of this stuff. So, <laughs> that's, uh, the sec- so that, that's there for, for – but I would say on, on the best and breed side, and I'm going to riff a little bit on, Chuck, what you said, is um, I would say it's targeted – functionality so you theoretically have targeted functionality solved for with best in breed and i would say for either one of these what's critical is the ability to have agility i didn't mean for that to rhyme and i apologize that was not that was not if either if any of these systems don't allow you to bolt on something to to address a new market need 
And it's like, if the code base is totally closed, if it doesn't communicate with others really well, or it only communicates a certain way, that might be a no-go system, but that actually has nothing to do with best in breed or or full suite. It has something to do with the product set that you bought. So that's just 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 a little asterisk there. Keep in mind. Some great uh, pros and cons there. So Chris, uh, we are running close to our time. Sure, sure. I'll keep it short. <laughs> so some great comments, guys. And I think you know, I'm I'm still a I'm a full suite guy. And of course, the Dynamics F and O is an A product. So. But to that said, we still, you heard me say that, we plug the gaps with deep industry functionality. So it is hybrid, full suite, a lot of advantages. Pro's right, fully integrated, a lot of value delivered in a single package. But then again, the con, it may not be as deep in the functionality. And again, the, the, the pro of the of the best in breed is you're going deep in that functionality and the con may be some extra cost and integration services. But again, that hybrid approach can serve a company well. But as we've said, based on their maturity and their life cycle, Full suite may get them started. And again, they've got to learn. They've got to learn um, of what they need and what their business processes are to really run their business. So, so yeah, guys, so uh, we are going to do the closing comments now. Closing co- comments and personal takeaways for everybody. So I am actually going to start with you, Chuck, if you don't mind. Do you want to start with your closing comments? And what was your personal takeaway from this conversation? Well, I, it's, my closing comment is that I think that companies really need to come at it from the Gemba it's a term, you know, that really is, you know, where are you actually deriving the greatest customer value within your organization? Everything starts from there. And they have to give themselves permission to make incremental progress. It, it's it, with, a, with a massive company with very deep pockets and teams and teams of people. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Only you know your business and only you know your customers. And when I put together all the thoughts of this panel, and I'm really privileged to be on here with you, um, that is just what I hear over and over and over again. Know what the heck you do. Know what the heck you value, where your value is created. And in my opinion, give yourself permission to make incremental process without hamstringing yourself for the future to the best of the ability of your pocketbook. Okay, great advice there, Chuck. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Mike, do you have any closing comments and personal takeaway from this conversation? I think one of the personal that I took away is keep an open mind. You know, it doesn't matter which way you go. Your business will change. The demands for your business will change. Be (laughs) open-minded. But I go back to one of the comments I made earlier is shop around. Partner with the people. And go back to them people, say, I want to talk to your customers. How were you there when they ran into this? I needed more deep, deep information. Could you help them? Or did you say, well, just go down the road and get a better brief because we, we're not there for you. So I think know what you want, keep an open mind, and bring multiple ven- vendors on and really understand what their customers are saying about it. Okay. Thank you so much for that advice, Mike. Really appreciate it. Uh, Aaron, do you have any closing comments and personal takeaway? Sure. So I, I will say that, um, and this is kind of the comment I get for pretty much anything. So if you've seen me on anything else, I'll probably end it the same way. Is that there's actually no right answer. There's just a good enough answer. So you'll have particular problems at particular times and solve the most. And it's just as you know, Chuck, you said it very much more eloquently than me. Solve for those ones first, the most important ones. Everything else will solve and, and things will shift. So there there will never be a Unless maybe you have to be a very static type industry and company, which I don't really know many like that. There is, is there, and then the, so there is no right answer. There's and and which which follows when all this is is a game of trade offs. Okay, amazing. Thank you so much, Aaron. So Chris, please end one sentence. Sure. Uh, quickly, comments. do your due diligence on your business process requirements and and rationalize a value to not having that deep functionality. And then you'll have a guideline on, oh, is it worth paying for or not? So that's it. Do your Thank math. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Uh, Tom, in one sentence, closing comments and uh, personal takeaway. My closing comment is that, you know, maybe maybe the whole proposition was a little bit unfair to us as a group. I mean, I don't think there's any such thing really as a true full suite solution for your entire business. I think you'll end up, even if you try to go full suite, even if you're committed you'll end up with a collection of applications. And it's really a question of degree. How hybrid will you be? How many applications? And you'll never end up with one one system. So don't delude yourself, I'd say. You'll be hybrid. It's just a question of degree. Yes, and my personal takeaway from this conversation is also going to be there is going to be degree of hybridness the way Tom described so spot on. 
on that note, guys, I really want to thank you for your time and insight. This has been a super productive conversation. Take care, everybody. Bye, Bye. Bye. Thank you. I cannot thank our guests enough for coming on the show, for sharing their knowledge and journey. I always pick up learnings from our guests, and hopefully you learned something new today. If you want to learn more about Tom Rodden, head over to varian.com. It's V-A-R-I-A-N.com. If you want to learn more about Michael Swajanhofer, head over to aquity.com. It's A-C-U-I-T-Y.com. If you want to learn more about Chris Garadini, head over to turnkeytech.com. It's T-U-R-N-K-E-Y-T-E-C.com. If you want to learn more about Chuck Coxhead, head over to presensus.com. It's P-R-O-C-E-N-S-I-S.com. If you want to learn more about Aaron Spool, head over to aventusag.com. It's, it's E-V-E-N-T-U-S-A-G.com. Links and more information will also be available in the show notes. If anything in this podcast resonated with you and your business, you might want to check other related episodes, including the interview with Jim Gitney from Group 50, who shares his thoughts on each inflection points for companies and what they need to know to identify them and move to the next by making necessary changes. Also, the interview with Randy Johnston from K2 Enterprises, who discusses why process documentation is essential to manage growth. Also, don't forget to subscribe and spread the word among folks with similar backgrounds. If you have any questions or comments about the show, please review and rate us on your favorite podcasting platform or DM me on any social channels. I'll try my best to respond personally and make sure you get help. Thank you, and I hope to get you on the next episode of the WBS Podcast. Thank you for listening to another episode of the WBS Podcast. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform so you never miss an episode. For more information on growth strategies for SMBs using ERP and digital transformation, check out our community at wbs.rocks. We'll see you next time.